Okay, so how's everybody doing this evening? So basically, this has become something that is personal. Uh, having some crazy issues on Facebook. And I just have to really, at this point, it's just I am determined. That's all I have to say. Really? I... I had some sound issues. I had all kinds of other issues today. So here we are. This is trying it again. And so basically, it's almost Thursday. And usually my live streams are really good, right? I mean, I have no problems whatsoever. But tonight, you know, even the whole day has been crazy. I know you guys have had days like that, right? Where it just seems, oh my god, how am I going to get through this day? That's exactly the way it was. And then when I got home, it continued that way. And my live streams didn't work. You know, but I didn't want to throw in a towel. I want to end this evening on a good note. I'm even going to go ahead and uh, send a message to people on Facebook to go ahead and watch my stream there we go so using some technology and not being afraid of technology so I'm just gonna continue and usually that's the way it is when technology sort of gives me a problem I basically will keep going until I find the answer I'm determined. I think that's what's a little bit different about me than other artists is that how I embrace and also have patience with technology. I think that's important for an artist. What do you guys think? You think technology has a place in the fine artist's life? Or should they stay just classically way to doing things or, or things like that? So as I'm waiting to hear from you guys we go ahead and put the uh, YouTube widget here so I could see your comments. See, so I go YouTube, come here. And so here's the chat and the comments. So I should be able to see your comments once, you know, if you feel, you know, you want to talk on this uh, Thursday evening. I'm always happy to talk with you guys and ladies. So as you can see, what I'm going to be doing now is working on the contours of her face, making sure everything is aligning correctly. So this way, when I come in with airbrush, I know that I measured everything correctly as best as I can. And so I would be totally ready for the airbrush and the ink to get those values but you want to have that you want to have the envelope right you want to make sure that that the tones the values are sitting where they're supposed to both anatomically and pictorially it's definitely good to worry about Definitely always, always good to worry about anatomy because uh, that's sort of like an understanding of what's happening. It's a good thing to know what's happening, but an understanding of what's happening is really good too. This right here, and I'll show you guys. We'll come right over here. That's not what I wanted to hit. Here we go. Let's come up here. So right over here, there's this sort of mid-tone here. I'm going to keep that. 
because that's going to tell me where this lighter color is going to be and also kind of lets me know what's happening same thing with here it doesn't just go over but it sort of drops off here at the end There we go. And let's go ahead and pull out. Okay. And once again, this is definitely the drawing stage of working in airbrush and India ink. You definitely want to make sure that everything looks good and then you're set up for those values. Okay. That's crucial. Oh, Wendy, how are you? It's good to see you. How are you feeling? I got to make the... Uh, I see here I have to make the words a little bit bigger. I can do that. I can change the size of the font, I believe. Let's see. Okay, here we go. Text size. Let's make it 19. Oh, that's better. Yeah, a little bit better than that. How about 23? Oh my God, nope, 23. That's 1923. Let's see. Ooh. Okay. That's much better. Okay, so, oh, great, so, yeah, so you just take it easy, you know, you just don't push yourself. You'll get things done, but you need to be okay, especially, you know, after, you know, with your headaches and everything. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you so much, Wendy. Uh, you know, it's just doing this drawing here for the airbrush. I want to make sure that it's that I can make these changes when I can and this way um, you know it's not like I wish I wish you know I would have drawn it better when I get to that stage I want to have no regrets you know hey Bill how you doing good to see you Bill and Wendy I've been having such a hard time uh, the software I'm using actually updated and caused a lot of problems and I'm not able to get on Facebook and then I was having some bandwidth issues and you know I'm just like determined when things like this happen I'm not <laughs> I'm not easily given up when it comes to my art in any aspect So I guess that's what, uh, you know, made me stick with it because I never give up, <laughs> you know, that's for sure. So Bill and Wendy, uh, how's your uh, Wednesday so far? Was it a good day? My day was a disaster. One thing, right, when we're doing the drawing stage, whether it's a pastel or airbrush, we always are very uh, eager to go ahead and, you know, jump into the airbrush or the paintbrushes, you know, the fun part. And to me, that's always been a detriment when I tried, you know. So you had a hectic day today, Wendy? Oh no. Well, I hope it's ending on a good note. I should be getting ready to go to bed, but like I said, I was just determined, you know? Determined to beat this 
Now, how is the live stream? Is it, is it, because early I've been having some problems with things such as, uh, you know, freezing and no sound. So what do you guys think so far? I know there's a delay about seven, seven or eight seconds. Oh, Bill, I'm glad that uh, that you're having a good day. Oh, so you had a good day at work? Hey, if you could have a good day at work, that is fantastic. Glad to hear that, Bill. The sound is low uh, because it's kind of late here, and I don't want to wake anyone up, the neighbors downstairs. So I do apologize. I'm, I'm a little bit closer to the mic now. Hopefully that helps. Maybe I can raise the gain a little bit. Let me see. I'm going to raise the gain a little bit. That should make the sound a little bit better. But I'm glad the picture quality is good. Oh, great. Let me lower this. Okay, great. All right, so now we're in good shape. Now, let's go ahead and make sure that this... I always make the eyebrows too thin. Oh, much better. Great. Yeah, I love this microphone I have here. It's the uh, Blue Yeti. Uh, really fantastic. Uh, very good quality. It costs about 150 but it's really worth it when you're doing live streams. And voiceovers. That's really good, too. And like I said earlier, it's just really tempting to just like go in with the airbrush right now. But I know that would be wrong in the long run. In the short term, I'll be like, yay, no more, no more worrying about contours. It's funny, I have a, quite a bit of watchers on YouTube right now. So that's... That's encouraging. I think I'm getting a lot of the West Coast in Europe. That's probably what's happening. So my next venture, guys, is pretty cool. It's actually going to be like a three-hour video of from the very beginning all the way to the end, mixing colors, mixing the ink, uh, going over the, the materials, why I use it, background story, and a full video, regular speed, and just step by step. It's gonna be a great learning tool. So that's what I'm gonna be working on. Within, within the next month or so, I should have that up. And right here is very interesting. So we're going to be working on her jawline here. And you can see it's not just straight. There's some meandering going on. And let me see if I can show you guys. I'll just go down here. So you see that there is you know, it sort of goes up, comes out at its apex, then goes in, and then sort of has a little break right here. But you can see this little apex there, and right here. Now, reading Tony Robert Ryder's book, which is uh, uh, figure drawing, the complete figure guy of figure drawing for the artist. So, like. As you see here, you have this contour. Let me put it over. That has too much on it, so let's go over here. So you see here, it comes down like right here. Let me move this paper up. It 
comes down like right here, right? And then comes out with the apex right about here, and then comes back down, and then sort of goes like this. So you can see that it's not totally straight, and that's something that I really look to achieve is not just doing it straight but really finding the sort of the music in the contours you know what I mean and I like to yes exactly it's only a it's only a slight curve but that curve is important for the character of the line So I really like to, let me see if I could, see that? I really like to hit that, and that's important to me, rather than just have it straight, you know what I mean? And I'm probably going to draw that line over and over again, maybe about, I would say at least 10 times, until I feel I have it right. But if I was to go ahead and do straight up, I don't think it would work. For me, it wouldn't. Like I said, I'll keep going back and forth. Thank you, Wendy. I appreciate that. To me, the line is everything. That's the most fun part of drawing and painting is that linear quality. You know... Painters like Rembrandt and Velasquez, you know, it's all about, you know, thick paint. Not for me. It's all about the line. If I had to give up drawing or painting, I would give up painting in a second if I had to choose. Definitely. Right. Because if one is off, then it's going to be a domino effect and that could cause a problem so you definitely have to make sure that the angles and relationships are right on the money so we can go to that again let's move this over well oh, there we go okay yeah to me exactly so here we are in the drawing. So, you know, as you said, Bill, and a very good point, you you want to basically realize of the slight uh, where the chin comes out here and be the beginning of that and then this angle here. Very important. So we definitely want to make sure we're hitting on that and I did mention earlier this evening how you have to go both directions both this way and that way to find the curves same here don't be afraid to erase it and going back you know And sometimes I like to just do a series of linear marks and then going in later. And yeah, it is pretty cool, Wendy. And just... Like that. And since we're zoomed in, it looks pretty crude, but it really isn't.
Here we go. I want to make sure that this angle is correct here. So I like to go this direction and then this direction to find exactly uh, what's happening. If I just go one direction, I can just sort of get in, involved in, you know, my subconscious taking over and just having it look crazy, you know? So I definitely want to do that. Okay, we'll zoom back out. But as you can see, we really are getting some nicer, and I'm just going to tap on that just to darken it. Oh, you're very welcome, Wendy. Yes, uh, I believe Ron Schur told me that uh, one of my teachers at the academy is the drawer. Make sure you go both directions. I like to just roll the kneaded eraser, and this way you can really calm down that that value. Oh, look at that. I have seven people watching on, on YouTube right now. So that's really cool. Right here is going to be interesting. Uh, you know, the placement of these shadows here. So I definitely want to make sure that I have these, I make sure I have these shadows right. So, and then this shadow here is important. And then how the hair sort of comes out of the shadow there. That's something I definitely want to, I don't want to put in detail that's never there. Never do that. Never put in detail that's not there. What you see is what you put in. You can omit things, but rarely put in contours. That's a, one of the things you see a lot of amateurs do. Thank you, Wendy. Okay. Okay, so this hair right here, this shadow plane, sort of comes, if I triangulate here, here, and there, I should find it. So here, and there. So that's it. So that's this shadow area here. Very soft. Soft edge, I should say. Raise that gain just a little bit more. And we're just going to worry about the big shape right now. And don't worry about the little shapes. Just, just trying to get all the anatomical areas here. This actually uh, is one of my models, and she's a friend and also a model. And she posed for me uh, a little while ago. So I usually uh, take my own photographs, but. Sometimes just for like YouTube and teaching purposes, I'll do a celebrity. But for my own work, I always use models and photograph. Uh, you know, because this way I'll get the lighting exactly the way I like. Maybe there's a painting that I really love. 
and I want to emulate some of those qualities, that sort of thing. So that's that's why I do that. How about yourself, Bill? Do you, uh, as far as reference, what do you use? See over here. Okay. Now I'm just going to start moving around a little bit quicker. Just get my my eyes roaming a bit. I started photographing my own models probably. Oh my God! Maybe right after right after high school, uh, I would say around eighteen or nineteen. I always uh, photographed about. If I was doing a pose, I would do about three hundred photographs, and then I would choose one. I've gotten much better at photography over the years, and I really I like photography a lot. can't say I, I love it, love it, because I'd rather be drawing, right? Drawing and painting. Yes, I definitely hear you, Bill. Uh, the free sauces are, sauces are very good. Um, uh, yeah, if you don't have the equipment, uh, it's not easy, right? You definitely have to have good photographs, good quality photographs for, for it to be worthwhile. That's for sure. And Wendy, have you ever photographed your uh, model for your paintings, for your drawings? Yes, definitely. You need you need room to pose the model, right? Uh, I know even even if I'm using a uh, wide angle lens like I have here in the studio, it is still you need room, right? You need to back up. That's very important. I do love cinematography now with DSLRs and mirrorless cameras. Uh, it does work. Uh, you know, you can do a lot with cinematography. So I really like that. I'd love to uh, one day just shoot a movie. That would be fun as technology gets better and better. The difference between a high quality movie camera and just something you can get for four or five hundred dollars. It really the gap is really closed which is really great plus video editing software is so great now compared to the way it was in easy the way it was before just going to darken some of these values here just a little bit just to give me a feeling that you know I'm getting the expression the important thing is I'm going to erase this once I start airbrushing I just want to have an idea of the value structure in the light and dark before I go any further I 
my hardest thing, most difficult thing is always, you know, asking, seeing someone who's interesting that you want to paint and, um, you know, having the guts. In my blog, I talked about that, about just asking someone to pose. You know, why not? It's, it's actually, it should be an honor for someone to be asked to pose for an artist. And it's an honor to paint them, too, of course, if you find them interesting. So, Wendy, yes, yeah, so you uh, also have a small house. So, yeah, that does limit you. I take, uh, I take photographs from, uh, I take my own backgrounds and, you know, and I pose the model in the studio. And that's pretty cool. I'll, I'll show you guys a case in point of how I did that. So it looks like they're outside on location. I just superimposed them in Photoshop and then and then go ahead and paint the picture. That's how I compose it. Uh, let's see. So we're going to go to... Uh, okay. Let me see under my pictures if I have one of those uh, sauces here. So this painting right here, guys, this, this is something I did a few years ago. And I had this, uh, this uh, really wonderful person and model and friend of mine, she posed for me. And this was in the studio. Just right here on you know on the furniture whoop and so this basically was like you know regular wall behind and everything and what I did was I actually superimposed uh, you know different elements that I had to find online such as this column here and you know just some architecture like Greek Roman architecture and what's interesting uh, with thank you Wendy What's really interesting about this piece is I call it Muse, and uh, the model is a Muse. However, what's really cool is it has elements from all of my favorite painters. You know, it has the element of Vermeer with the pearl earring. He's my one of my favorites, and then there is, there is the uh, Roman architecture which is remind me of Jacques Louis David and then when one of Jacques Louis David's uh, paintings Madame Racamier is a woman uh, laying down on a couch and it's kind of reminiscent of that and oh thank you Bill I appreciate that very much and yeah the model she's amazing They're just amazing model it, and yeah she just has a just really great qualities uh pictorially you know just everything just and then you and then the model has to give back right so this model was able to really give expression and it came natural and that's what every artist really looks for because that's what remains is the interaction between the viewer and and the model uh this particular uh Part of Madame Racamier's painting is this sort of this oil lamp, and my other favorite painter is uh, Jean Augusta Dominique Angra, and he was the student of David. And what's really cool is that in the painting of Madame Racamier, he this is actually uh, this was actually painted by the student of Jacques Louis, de, Jacques Louis David, which was Angra, who is my third favorite painter. So it's sort of a muse, not only for the model, but also uh, for the pose and the background and the elements that I used. Uh, yes, exactly. And you, you can't direct that. That's something that comes naturally, Bill. And you, know, you hope you find people like that, that, you know, that will pose for you, be nice enough to pose for you. So, yeah, definitely, Bill, I agree. So it is 12 o'clock, so I just wanted to, uh, you know, just make sure I conquered this live stream. I'm pretty good here, so the next time 
the next time we're we're gonna be uh, doing a live stream we're gonna actually start coming in with the airbrush I think we're okay right now but the whole thing about this is that I wanted to really uh, emphasize how important all the linear qualities are before you go in with the airbrush whether you're drawing it freehand doing the graph method or you know using uh, you know transfer paper whatever you still have to make sure that those lines are beautiful and that you're happy with it because then it has your signature on it and then oh okay cool now you're back and uh, Wendy what happened was the uh, the chat part went away it's just been a weird night with YouTube and Facebook I'll tell you live streaming is not easy and so I have my regular job tomorrow so I'm gonna uh, bid you guys adieu but thank you I'm so glad I kept trying so I got to see uh, Bill and Wendy you guys are great you guys are always so encouraging and uh, always love talking to you guys so I hope you have a great night and uh, hopefully uh, we'll talk to you, talk soon okay take care guys always a pleasure